she saw Jesus and Jesus told her to take out things from her heart to clear the burdens from her heart and she felt very peaceful and joyful so this is something that can happen okay and how can we help Christians who don't believe that other Christians can fall under the power of God uh, we can first tell them the Bible does talk about that people fall under the power of God when they saw Jesus then they say you are not Jesus but we say uh, you know we are Christians and we follow God we confess our sin we ask Jesus to forgive us and we we read the Bible we follow the Bible and we obey the Bible and we try to bring people to Jesus so we're real Christians and when we experience the Holy Spirit it's always helpful to us it help our spiritual life and uh, we don't find any evil spirit attacking us so it's not evil spirit that's that we are having we are having the Holy Spirit so in a peaceful way we can communicate with them about the goodness of experiencing the Holy Spirit but this is a big problem between Christians that Christians who don't accept the whole the work of the infilling of the Holy Spirit it seems some of them it's very hard for them to to understand that but we just try to be peaceful and you say look at my life and see any problem that you notice and then the next thing we can do we can ask them how about you try to love God more because the Bible says love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul all your strength all your mind so you love God more and enjoy God more because the Bible says delight in the Lord so you try to delight yourself with the Lord and say Lord you're so good I love you I like you I thank you instead of just pray Lord help me help me feel with the Holy Spirit pray in a way to build up the relationship thank you Lord I love you I adore you I need you you're so wonderful hallelujah or maybe for maybe for them it's easier to sing praises to God and then they spend more time every day um, at least maybe half an hour praising God loving God and then they can experience God more and more and then gradually they can uh, uh, they will find that they have more peace more calmness burdens go away and then they can uh, find that it's helpful and then ask them lay hand on someone you know and ask if they experience something when you lay hand on someone just say Jesus loves you thank you Jesus come Lord Jesus and bless the person and sing some songs hallelujah and then ask the person did you experience something when I pray for you so that way if they spend more time praying and then they find that when they pray for someone the person will experience the Holy Spirit then they know that it's the Holy Spirit that they're experiencing it's not evil spirit or is it something that came from the spirit-filled Christians but it's when they come close to God then they can experience God himself also okay so I think it's time for your lunch right can you answer me um, okay so please tell me uh, it, I need about eight minutes to be ready so give me time uh, give me time when it's about time almost time allow eight minutes for me to be ready for the broadcast okay God bless you all okay amen hallelujah God bless you we'll stop for now we'll come back later maybe uh, uh, maybe three quarter of an hour later but when you're ready please let me know how do we know that he will surely forgive us it's from the Bible the Bible promises that when we trust in Jesus that he will give us eternal life and he will forgive us so we can be sure of that and we can tell people yes you can you're forgiven now many people doubt and worry about God's forgiveness but we want to be sure God forgives us it's a precious gift it's a precious gift I have eternal life and I want to treasure that I want to treasure that okay number three Galatians 6 8 for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap destruction what kind of destruction will sowing to the flesh bring and uh, now I again this is uh, I have uh, answer this question already but it's uh, when we just look at this Bible verse we'll say 
Uh, the second part of this verse says that if we sow to the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap uh, eternal life. So God has prepared eternal life for us. But we have our sinful nature. If we follow the sinful nature, then there is destruction. But we always start with God's wonderful plan, God's wonderful grace that we can have eternal life. Here. We have the Holy Spirit. It's only when people don't follow God, don't, you know, they sin and then they can reap destruction. So this destruction can destroy his ministry, his family, his future, his ability, uh, everything. Okay, next question. What will God do if Christians continue sin? If people continue sin, uh, it will, his life will go down more and more. It will start from having no peace. Uh, he will start to be angry with himself, angry with other people, angry with God. And the relationship with God will go worse and worse. And he will hear the Holy Spirit less and less. And if he continues to sin without repentance, he can one day lose his salvation. So if people, Christians continue to sin, it's very serious. First, his whole life, his family, the trust of people will all be destroyed. So people don't trust him. So all this will be destroyed. Ephesians 4.26 In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. According to this verse, how do people give a foothold to the devil. Now this verse is talking about sin. So in your anger, do not sin, do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. So do not stay being angry for a long time and do not give the devil a foothold. So it's talking about, in context, we'll be talking about being angry can give the devil a foothold or other sins can give the devil a foothold. So sinning gives Satan a foothold. We don't want to sin. We don't want to give Satan a foothold. When Satan comes, he will come and destroy and kill and, and steal. He will take away everything we have. So we don't want to, to uh, let him steal. Now, I want to say that many people might have sinful habits. For instance, women might have a sinful, now it's men and women, but I, I'm just comparing. Men, women, base, uh, it's easier to gossip easier to be complaining and worry and then men is easy to have lust and adultery and have lack of sense of responsibility for the family now, all these are habits and some people say it's hard for me to get rid of this habit uh, when i look at a woman it's very hard to not to look at a woman I, it's hard not to lust now we must realize that it would destroy our life so if for any man if we are in any kind of lust, it would destroy our life. We have to say no to the lust and say, my life is very precious. If I let sin come into my life, it would destroy my life more and more. So we have to be careful using the five steps to victory. Aware of the sin, of the lust, and then it's destructive. Thir and then third, the Bible, what does the Bible say? And then pray for forgiveness and for strength. Number five, I choose to obey. I choose to turn away from lust. I choose to have a... Have, uh, holy thoughts in my life and then for women who like to gossip and then they will say okay i realize that i'm aware that i'm gossiping i'm aware that i am having negative thoughts about people and then or emotional and then i realize this this destructive and then the bible tell us not to gossip and to help the person and pray for the people even though they are problem we want to pray for them and bless them and then pray for forgiveness and, and strength. And then I choose not to gossip. Even when we're gossiping, we stop <clears throat> right away. <clears throat> when we're complaining, we want to stop right away. So these are choosing to obey God and breaking sinful habits. Very important. Breaking sinful habits. Okay, uh, next question. What is the first step of victory over sin that we have committed? The first step to victory is repentance and asking for forgiveness and trusting in Jesus' forgiveness. If we don't trust in Jesus' forgiveness and we say, I've committed a serious sin, God will not forgive me, I have no chance, then He will destroy His own chance. But if we believe God is a God to forgive, Jesus has died for all the sins in the world, except the Bible says that the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. 
Now, if someone has committed the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, he will not have a sense of repentance because the Holy Spirit has left him already. So many people say, have I committed that sin? And I would say, if you still are sorry for your sins, then you have not committed that sin yet. You still have a chance. But we really don't want to say anything against the Holy Spirit. So we, we want to be very careful and not to let sin control our life and then take away our eternal life. So, and we believe that Jesus forgive me, Jesus forgive me, I'm forgiven, so I have the strength. So the love and the acceptance and the forgiveness give us continual strength to continue to live as a Christian. Okay, explain the five steps of victory. Uh, I just explained that already. Aware of the sin and its destructive and what does the Bible say to obey and pray for forgiveness and, and strength and then choose to obey, choose to stop the sin. And sometimes we need help from other Christians uh, so that we can face the sins together. Some Christians, they are very weak. They need to have Christian friends who are supportive, not Christian friends who gossip, but Christian friends who can pray together and encourage him and appreciate him together. Not just tell him what to do, but to appreciate his growth, appreciate his effort. That way he will have more strength. We need strength from other Christians to hold this person together. And then the next question, how can we stop a sin when it enters our mind? Now the key to stopping sin is to stop it when it comes to my mind. When we have a thought of lust, immediately say, this is destructive. I need to stop it and pray for forgiveness and ask God to give me strength to turn away from the woman and stop right away. And if a sin of wanting to tell a lie, we immediately will say, this, will, uh, uh, this is destructive. I don't want to tell a lie. It, uh, it, God doesn't like it and it can destroy the trust of people and it will destroy God's plan in my life. So I choose to stop it when some when I'm about to tell a lie, I want to stop it. So when we are in the habit of doing that, then gradually, immediately when a sinful thought comes into our heart, immediately we, we will stop it. We have the motivation to stop it. Uh, or when someone is complaining and very, very uh, sad and depressed, then we say, Still, it's a sin. Depression is a sin. When we let depression affect us, we're, then we're aware that we are unhappy, we're uh, depressed, and then it's destructive. And the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. And then, number four, that uh, we pray for forgiveness and for strength. And we praise God. Sometimes it's just asking for strength. But we praise God. Hallelujah. God is helping me. God is forgiving me. God is giving me strength so that I can have more joy. Hallelujah. So we praise God. We have more strength. And then we choose to overcome, say no to, to depression. Now, depression is not easy to overcome because sometimes even when we want to be joyful, the mind is used to being sad. So we need to keep praising God, maybe dance and, and uh, jump around and praise God. And then we can enjoy God and then be forgiven. And then, uh, and then we can have, have uh, joy, overcome the negative emotions. Okay, Num nine, the ninth uh, question, if we stop sinning while the sin is in our mind, what should we say to ourselves? We should say, well, you are doing well. You are obeying God. That's wonderful. You will do better and better. So we always want to encourage us when we are improving. Thank God I'm improving. It's not pride. It's saying, I thank God that He's helping me, that He's doing this. Okay, now the next lesson, the sixth one, help people to experience the Holy Spirit. Now first experience how we explain how we experience the Holy Spirit with these verses. These verses will tell us that we can experience the Holy Spirit in different ways. In John 14, 27, Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you. So here first is Jesus said He will give us peace. But some people say that's Jesus giving, not the Holy Spirit giving. But Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is triune God, is three in one. So when Jesus is giving, the Holy Spirit is also giving us peace. Many people experience the Holy Spirit when they pray to God. The first thing they experience is peace. When they love God, when they are praising God together, when someone uh, spirit feel lay hand on them that they experience the peace coming to them. The second is burdens remove. Matthew 11 that come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. So they feel burden go away. And third 
body in rest and comfort. Psalm 16, 9. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices and my flesh also will rest in hope. So it will give us joy and also the body, the whole body will have greater comfort and even healing that will feel like floating in heaven when we praise God for a long time we can experience this peace coming to our body that we feel very uh, uh, in rest and in comfort and then love we can experience the love of God because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given who was given to us that's Romans 5 5 so the Holy Spirit can give us love of God I have experienced that many times when I think of the love of God. Hallelujah! <laughs> and His love will flow into me. And the more open you are to God, the more you experience His love coming to you. So we need to, be fam need to familiarize ourselves with these verses that we can experience the Holy Spirit in different ways. Inner healing. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted so that the, heal the brokenhearted can be healed, that He can do inner healing in our life that uh, all the sadness in the past all the hurt feelings in the past can be healed and then physical healing that um, that Isaiah 53 5 by his stripes we are healed of the body uh, and Matthew quote this verse and said that is when he uh, Jesus gave healing of the body so this verse talk about healing of the body that people can have healing and I pray for many people and many people have experienced healing and then G is demons being driven out Mark 16 17 in my name they will cast out demons so in Jesus name we can cast out demons so these are ways we can experience the Holy Spirit and then when we pray for people in, in the future lay hand on them and then experience any of this and then we can tell them this is what God is doing in your life you're experiencing God so God is blessing you. Do you want Him to continue to bless you? And then if you want to, trust in Jesus as a Savior and then you can be blessed by God in, in your whole life. So first we need to familiarize ourselves with this uh, work of the Holy Spirit. And then second is Acts 1.8 For you have received power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. What is the main purpose that God gives us the power of the Holy Spirit? Uh, this verse says very clearly, the main purpose when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit is to be His witnesses to, in Jerusalem to the end of the world. So it's mainly for evangelism and for raising up the spiritual life of people because the Great Commission has two parts, bringing people to be disciples and then teaching them to obey everything Jesus has uh, taught us. So the main purpose is not just for our enjoyment. It's not just for healing. It's mainly for evangelism, saving people's life, and raising up people's life. Healing is for the purpose of bringing people to Jesus and also helping them to love God more, to obey God. So it's also for the Great Commission. The Great Commission is our final goal. It's very important. Now some people just want prophetic words just for themselves for comfort we want that for the Great Commission prophetic words and uh, healing and inner healing and all the work of the Holy Spirit we want it to be for uh, the Great Commission and then Acts 2.17 and it shall come to pass in the last day says God I will pour out on my spirit on all flesh your sons and daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions your old men shall dream dreams so God the question is how many Christians does God want to fill with the Holy Spirit what will the infilling of the Holy Spirit bring the, God wants all flesh of course it means all Christians because only Christians can have the infilling of the Holy Spirit and God wants everyone in the whole world to believe in Jesus and have the infilling of the Holy Spirit but not everyone obey and trust in Jesus and follow God that's why they don't have it but at least Christians all Christians should have it but it's very sad that many Christians do not understand the work of the Holy Spirit and then they uh, they're not open to the work of the Holy Spirit at the same time I want to say this among the charismatic Christians there are some practices that are not from the Bible for instance some charismatic preachers don't preach much about the Word of God 
they just quote the verse and then say a few sentences and then they keep going about experiences. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches to, you know, that we open the Word of God to teach people the Word of God, to teach them to obey the Word of God. Uh, and also there are some teachings that are not from the Bible. So we want to follow the Bible. Now you notice here I talk about the Holy Spirit, I talk about only what the Bible says that we can do and then I do. So here what does the Bible say that we can do? That God wants us to be able to prophesy and see visions and dream dreams. Now not everyone can prophesy. Not everyone see visions. Not everyone dream dreams. But we can all hear from God because Jesus said my, my sheep will hear my voice. We all can hear. So we can in a sense we receive messages from God. Now some people say, I, don't, I haven't received any message from God. I want to say this, all Christians must have received messages from God. First, the message of repentance. All Christians, when they sin, they will receive the message of repentance from God, that the God tell them to, to repent of their sins. Pay attention to that feeling when God speaks to us when we sin. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. And also when we read the Bible or, or hear a message, God will also speak to our heart. And then we pay attention to how God speaks to us. And sometimes God guides us to do certain things for God. And we pay attention to that. Then we get used to hearing God's voice. And then gradually we can hear Him more and more. And some people will see visions, some people will have dreams, and then some people will prophesy. But we don't push it beyond what God has done. Don't force prophecy to come out if it hasn't come to us. Uh, but when we can confirm it, when we confirm it uh, with prayer, with different Christians praying together, and with pastor uh, approving that this is from God, then we can say it out. So we have to be very careful with prophecy. I've heard many people they prophesy and it didn't come true. So we want to uh, have the approval of pastors, leaders who are spiritual to find out if the prophecy came from God. Okay, now this next is about Mark 16, 15 on. Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then he, and these signs will follow those who believe. My, in my name, they'll cast out demons and they will speak with new tongues. And they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hand on the sick, and they will recover. Now, I, I believe that drink poison and, and not be hurt, and lay hand on the, uh, and take up serpents and not be hurt, that this would apply to situation in difficult situation, not daily. Excuse me. That, um, that is not, you know, I don't believe that we should go and touch a snake and try it out. I, I think this is for a situation when we are persecuted and then we have to face the snakes. But then to drive out demons and to uh, lay hand on the sick, this is what we should do. And who should do it? The Bible says this sign will follow those who believe. So everyone who believes can do it. But we have to clear ourselves of sins, negative thoughts and demons. If people have demons, or negative thoughts live in that negative thoughts now people we, we all still have negative thoughts but then it will come and then we take care of it right away but peop, some people stay in negative thoughts then they should not lay hand on people some people stay in negative emotions they should not lay hand on people some people stay in sin they should not take uh, lay hand on people but if they have sinful thought immediately they take care of it and for the whole day you know, as much as possible they praise God and love God and they uh, have a good relationship with God and they don't detect any demons and the pastor didn't detect any demons then with the approval of pastor they can lay hand on people and help them to experience the Holy Spirit and lay hand on the sick and be healed and also it will bring uh, evangelism too. So what, does, what did Jesus promise to everyone who believe? How long will Christians have the authority to perform miracles in Jesus name? So. What did Jesus promise to everyone who believe that we can drive out demons in Jesus name that we can have uh, miracles for following us we can lay hands on the sick and they will recover so we have these promises of miracles how long will this will Christians have this authority 
it says in verse 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So as long as the gospel is being preached, as long as there is uh, time to preach the gospel, then there can be miracles. But there are some people who have this uh, theology of termination of, uh, of miracles. But first, Mark 16 doesn't say it will terminate. And also, uh, 1 Corinthians 12 says that we still have this. It didn't say that we'll stop these spiritual gifts. Okay, now this next question here is 1 Corinthians 12, 8. It talks about different spiritual gifts, words of wisdom, uh, words of knowledge, and faith, and gifts of healing, and work miracles, and prophecy, and uh, discerning of spirit, and different kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Do these spiritual gifts include su supernatural gifts? So a number of these are supernatural gifts. Actually, all gifts are supernatural. But to many people, like playing the piano, they don't regard it as supernatural, but it's still supernatural that God can give a supernatural ability to play the piano. But here, talk about gifts people regard as more supernatural, like uh, healing and, and prophecy. Uh, so these are more supernatural and and uh, uh, so this so uh, the Holy Spirit does bring supernatural gifts so what are the purpose of the supernatural gifts the purpose is found in Mark 16 verse 20 is to for the confirmation of the Word of God is for confirmation of the Word of God so that people know that the Word of God is true so they believe and follow God's Word did Paul say that one day these gifts will disappear on earth? No, the Bible did not say that. The Bible did not say that this gift will stop. He did not say that at all. Okay, and what does the infilling of the Holy Spirit mean? Uh, to me, and from the Bible, it means a close relationship with God. Now, these people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, they really love God, they obey God, they dedicate their life to God, they, they forsake their sin, and they and they go around and preach the gospel and help people. So in feeling the Holy Spirit, it's not just falling down under the Holy Spirit. It's a continual lifestyle, a close relationship with God and forsaking sin and obeying God and serving God in different ways. Now, we don't have to be ministers to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Any Christian can be filled with the Holy Spirit, but it must include that willingness to share the gospel and to tell people about Jesus and forsake all sins and obey God. And then who can lay hand on other people? How should people prepare themselves before they lay hand on people? What is the purpose of laying hand on people? And what should we pay attention to when we lay hand on people? Uh, according to Mark uh, 16, all who believe can lay hand on people. And how should people prepare themselves before they lay hand on people? They should have a close relationship with God and forsake all sins and repent and turn away from the sin and take care of the emotions, negative emotions, so that they don't live in negative emotions, negative thoughts or sins, and they don't live in unforgiveness. They want to take care of uh, unforgiveness and bad relationship with people. They want to bless people. So these are things we need to prepare. And also pray more for a stronger infilling of the Holy Spirit. And then what, the purpose. The purpose is to help people to experience the Holy Spirit, experience peace, love, joy, and the inner healing, and a transformation of life, and for uh, power to evangelism, for strengthening of the spiritual life, and renewal of the spiritual life, and for spiritual gifts. So the laying of hands will bring all the work of the Holy Spirit, and can bring a stronger relationship with God, and a stronger spiritual gifts. But it doesn't just come from laying on of hands. The person has, has to continue to keep the relationship with God. The person must continue to keep the relationship with God. He cannot just depend on someone laying on him and, and believe that and then think that he will re, uh, receive the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. It has to depend. He has to have a continual relationship with God. Okay? What should we pay attention to when we lay hands on people? First, we don't push people. I've seen many people even including evangelists they push people to fall down the Bible never says that the Bible says that when John saw Jesus in Acts 117 he fell down under the power of God he fell down and then saw when he saw Jesus he fell down and the soldiers when Jesus said I am and then they fell back 
but nobody pushed them. Put, falling down is not what benefit them. It's what they experience, the work of the Holy Spirit. So it doesn't matter if they don't fall, they're standing, it's fine. If they experience the peace, love and joy and healing and transformation of their life, that's great, that's great already. They don't have to fall down. And many people push people to fall down for the sake of showing that they have the power of God. But actually, people see a mixed message. They can see the hand pushing. You know, sometimes they push on people and then people uh, fall back a little bit. They push more, push more. You can see the head, the neck is bent. The person keep pushing, pushing, pushing until the person has no choice but to fall down. People can see that. It, they will give a mixed message. And people say, why did he do that? He did it for his own pride, so he's serving under pride. So I, I will advise people not to invite people, push people when they lay hands on people to the church. Don't ask them to come because they have us. They are controlled by pride and they don't know it. So they shouldn't lay hands on people at all. And, and people do it for their own pride, or for their own reputation or for money. Now it's right that ministers should receive money to support him, but he doesn't force it on people. And also when we lay hands on people, we want to touch just lightly. Don't put weights because then people will feel heaviness. Just touch lightly. And to be, uh, to, with women, uh, to be very careful. If there are women present, let the women lay hands on the women. Now, if you're a pastor, you have to lay hands on men and women, then be, have clean thoughts. Don't have lustful thoughts. And be careful not to touch you know, sensitive parts of the body, just touch the shoulder or the head and don't touch other parts of the body and don't lay hand in secret. Do it in public and be careful. And catchers too, be careful. And it's better to have women catch the women and have men catch the men. Uh, so to be, uh, so that people don't have lust when they catch, or no man catch a woman that he has lust then then they are allowing sin to happen in the process of praying for people. Okay, eight. Should we push people to fall down when we <clears throat> lay on people? Definitely no. And then I would not invite someone who lay, push people to fall down. Why do so many push people when they lay on people? I think they do it because of pride. They want to do it for their own glory. That's something God doesn't like. If God works, we don't have to push. Number nine, what benefit can laying on hands bring? I just said it already, that then of joy, the joy of the Lord, peace, love, uh, uh, and inner healing, physical healing, and uh, dem demons driven out, a transformation of life, uh, all kinds of work of the Holy Spirit that laying on hand can bring. How should people maintain the infilling of the Holy Spirit? Now, uh, we have talk about that before that uh, th that first we need to repent of our sins because God doesn't like sin first and then second believe in the Bible and obey the Bible really follow the Bible and number three uh, to have faith in God trust that God really wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit so when we pray don't say oh God where are you but believe that he's blessing us and number four, spend long time hungering for God, praising God, loving God, and believing that God is loving us. And number five, obey God in every way, especially the Great Commission. And then number six, uh, take care of different sins or negative thoughts, negative emotions in our life. And seven, laying on of hands and spirit-filled prayer meeting are helpful. But they're not the only way. They are helpful. It helps us. We need to maintain that. So try to praise God and love God all day long. Then it's easier to keep the infilling of the Holy Spirit all day long. Okay, then we pray and ask God to, to bless us now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Please help us to live in your love and live in your, your presence live in your grace all the time we know that we are blessed by you all the time when we trust in you that you're happy to bless us you're always happy to bless us you want to bless us 
So when we trust in you and follow you, we'll be blessed by you all the time. Please help us to live in grace and to be motivated by God's grace because God has provided so many things for our life. Everything God has prepared for us is wonderful. So we want to trust in God and rely on God and let God guide us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. We want to follow you totally. We want to obey you totally and live in your grace and joy and, and relax in you and enjoy you all the time and be strengthened by you. Help us, Lord, to take away legalism from us that we don't force people to obey, but we motivate people with God's love and we let people see how wonderful God is and how wonderful it is to obey God, that we don't want to compare with people and compete with people or step down on people or to give people pressure, but to let them know God is wonderful. God is a wonderful God, so we want to trust in God and, and follow God all the days of our life. Lord, give us strength and help us to enjoy you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord, to understand this teaching so that we live in the grace of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.